introduce our panelists in just a moment, but let me just say that, um, as, as Ray suggested, these issues bear on a whole variety of themes, legal, regulatory, commercial, uh, communications, engineering, scientific and technical, ethical even, and certainly political. And let me just say, in as much as I'm the, uh, the resident political scientist on the panel, just to say a, a word or two about the politics of all this, uh, the media is full of the question of, will this lead to dramatic policy changes? Will this be a policy game changer uh, in energy policy or perhaps climate change policy or both or even, even beyond? Uh, my own perspective is that uh, policy window opens infrequently and it doesn't stay open for very long. So it's rare that events like these actually produce lasting policy changes. Whether this will be one of those occasions remains to be seen. Um, I would just point out another thing about the, how we think about these, these disasters which occur with some frequency. In early 2001, the FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, predicted three major catastrophes, uh, the, the three biggest catastrophes that might befall uh, the homeland. A terrorist attack on New York City, uh, a flood in uh, New Orleans, and uh, an earthquake in San Francisco. Well, as we well know, the first two have already occurred. I think most people who study the San Francisco fault lines are pretty confident that a major earthquake, bigger than anything we've seen so far, is probably coming. Um, so this comes to the area of how we think about these disasters, which are sometimes predictable. We can't predict the precise event, but we know that disasters of a certain nature uh, may occur. It's very hard to mobilize public attention to address these things beforehand. So we, we tend to wait till the, the, the disaster has struck, then try to fix it. We say, never again will this occur. Uh, the, the remediation is usually addressed at preventing the occurrence of that specific event, but the, the next time around, it's another event that catches us by surprise. So we're trying to, to wrestle with these issues uh, in all their, their dimensions that we have, as Ray suggested, a very distinguished panel of experts across a variety of fields. What I will do is introduce them all so as not to interrupt the flow of their conversation and then turn the floor over to them for their three-minute presentations. Uh, at the very end, uh, Professor Tipman will actually segue right into his longer presentation so as to be more, more efficient as a panel. So let me uh, introduce my, my colleague, the colleagues to my right. Uh, Dr. Tadeusz Pacek is chairman of the Department of Petroleum and Geosystems Engineer, the Cockrell Family Chair in Engineering, and the Lois K. and Richard D. Folger Leadership Chair in Petroleum and Geosystems Engineering. His research involves mathematical modeling of Earth systems, among other things. Dr. Paul Bomber is the founder of the oil and gas drilling and production operation Bomber Engineering Company and is a senior lecturer in petroleum engineering at UT. He joined the faculty in 2004 and teaches courses in drilling, production, artificial lift, and facilities. Dr. Pacek and Dr. Bomer will discuss the causes of the Deepwater Horizon drilling disaster and the various control attempts that have taken place so far. Farther down to my right, your left, Dr. Charles Chip Grote is director of the Center for International Energy and Environmental Programs at UT. He's a former director of the U.S. Geological Survey and former state geologist uh, in Louisiana. There are probably few people who know more about the coastal ecosystems in Louisiana and the threats to them than Chip Grote does. His research has focused on scientific approaches to understanding complex natural systems and resource and infrastructure development impacts on natural systems and the restoration ecology of these uh, systems. He will address the oil spill effects on fragile coastlines and the land loss factor in Louisiana. David, David Edelman is the Harry Reasoner Chair in Law at the School of Law. He teaches and writes in the areas of environmental law, intellectual property law, and climate change policy. His articles have addressed such topics as the implications of emerging genomic technologies for toxics regulation and evidentiary standards and regular, regulatory decision making. He will speak on liability law uh, in three distinct areas of liability law. International Admiralty Law, the 1990 U.S. Oil Pollution Act, and state common law raised by the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. 
And finally, Dr. Sheridan Tipman is the Walter McAllister Centennial Chair in Financial Services at the McComb School of Business. His research interests include both investments and corporate finance. He is a past director of the American Finance Association and current director of both the Asia Pacific Finance Association and the Western Finance Association. He will talk about the reaction and evidence to date from the futures markets from a business perspective and the economics of extracting oil from deep water. So with that, let me turn to the panelists. I will try to keep the panelists to within their three-minute segments in round one and then to within their 15-minute uh, allotted time in, in round two. So let me first turn to Dr. Tadej Pacek. Well, thank you very much.